Well, hello there. Today I'm going to show you a cool, very cool script I recently made to myself to keep track of everything that I do during the day. It's really simple and you can see it already. It's up here, it's working. And it's basically just a small, just a few scripts that uh, log whatever I type that I am currently doing and display it over here on i3's uh, search bar. So if you don't know, yeah, I'm currently using i3. It is basically this interface and this uh, this up here is i3 blocks. And it is what I configured specifically to, to be displayed like this. Now this for calories, I'm going to uh, talk about this another day. But this one specifically I want to tackle now because it's quite, it's a lot more interesting. So let's go to documents, scripts, tracker. I called it tracker. And let me first show you the functionality. So how it works is you have, you can press a shortcut to display the current, uh, current um, activity, which I mean, you can see it here, but still, uh, yeah. I, I did that as well. Then you have a shortcut to stop the activity. And then I have a default a default log for doing jack shit, like a reman reminder whenever I see this in red that I'm basically procrastinating. And then another shortcut to set start an activity. And for example, here I have a few default presets, for example, that I'm currently working on. Maybe I'm reading some electronics, maybe I'm reading a book, maybe I'm doing some Japanese or whatever. Uh, let's say I'm, I am doing hack the box now. It says activity hack the, bus, hack the box running and then here it started. And this is pretty useless by itself, but the cool thing comes after you go to documents, uh, tracker inside of documents, not scripts. And here, here you have uh, your logs of what you did and when. It's a CSV file, so for example, if we take the current, current day, uh, date, let's say date plus percentage F, this is the current date, you can CS view date that log. And this is basically the, the file. So this is what I did today. Here is the time, so at midnight I, I stopped reading a, a book, then at 6, 6 p.m. I started the recording, then I stopped it with my shortcut, and then I st started doing hack the box uh, with the other shortcut I showed you. And this, I mean, it's just a file, you can technically edit it like you would normally. But I have shortcuts for that because I'm lazy. I just want to do it with shortcuts. It's much easier. It also prevents me from just forgetting about it. I, I, I know I see it here and I'm constantly reminded that, oh, I have to log my activities. So it's very good. Uh, but let me show you the script. So how it works is um, I have my i3 config here and I have mod second plus, let's say, what is it? J, for example. Yeah, this, these are the tracker shortcuts. I set up so mod second is some key binding plus J will uh, start an activity. So this, oh, if I start another activity while I have one running, it will still, it will tell me that it's already running. So I have to stop it first and then start another one, and I will get this menu. I can also set, type anything I want here. It's just the menu, so you can technically select one of the presets or just type anything you want, but. Okay, here's a script for start, then you have another shortcut to start to, to see the current one. So if I do this, there, it says there is no current activity, and then another one to stop it. And what these scripts here do, essentially, these are the scripts I just showed you. Let's see, for the current one, what it's doing is... Actually, let's first take a look at the start one. So there is a location, documents, tracker here where my logs are saved and it tests if there is a lock on the on the on the tracker so a lock basically means that when I start 
an activity, for example, hack the box, a lock will appear. This means that I'm already in, a, in doing an activity and it's stored in the in the file. So this means an activity is already running. And so uh, but when you start something, it will just check this and it will tell you something is already running. You have to stop it first. Then do some dark magic. It will take a few presets. So these are the presets from my file and uh, remove any comments and pipe them into the menu so you can input your activity and then whatever you input into the menu this is here it will be fed into the this variable then it will check if you actually inputted nothing and if you did you just it will just exit otherwise it will take the time it will take the, take the time and date and just throw it into the into the the, the log file here as well as signing a, it will start a, a lock file, so it will actually uh, make a lock. So you can start multiple activities. You can't, and yeah. And also it will notify i3, it will notify the user saying that the activity is running. But this is kind of useless because you can see it here, but still, it's, uh, it's nice. Then to stop it, all we have to do is basically just um, check if this lock file doesn't exist it means that there is nothing running actually so we don't have to even do anything then it will take the date time activity which is stored inside of the lock file and basically just echo the log onto the date that the activity is stopped remove the lock file and send to you and so that one, another one can be started and notify the user that's all and then lastly for the current one basically all you have to do really is if the lock file file doesn't exist, there is nothing running and else um, there is something running, in which case the activity name is inside of the lock file. That is all actually. Um, and yeah, this, I mean, this, this uh, format of doing things is really nice because I can also display it up here. I can just take the contents of the lock file refresh them every second and display them on here and this i didn't use the standard way of i3 which is i3 status for the status bar i modified it um with i3 blocks and i3 blocks is the cool thing because you can actually also change the color you can input commands and with i3 status you have some specific things, but you cannot really change it. But with i3 blocks, you can actually input commands. And this is how you basically get something. So when you have um, an activity, you have an activity. This is like one of the sections that is going to be separated from other sections by the separator. You cat the lock. You convert the whole thing into uppercase. And then you simply modify it a bit, maybe set up a prefix, activity, colon, and then the name of the activity. And this will do it every second with this color. If I wanted, I could even change this. Let's see, I start some Tokyo Bull Anga, and maybe I can change the, the color to blue. I refresh it and oh, and we have a blue color. But I don't like this one, I like it green, so it will stay this way. And whenever the log file is deleted, it will actually just input nothing, so this thing will disappear. But this one will have the... will, will, will detect that there is... the file is not running, the, the file doesn't exist, and hence echo doing jack shit. So this one will actually disappear when the file is deleted. But this one will detect it, that the file is, doesn't exist, and then output this instead, with the color red. I did it this way because I wasn't really sure if you could change the color interactively just using this, so I instinctively just knew that this would disappear, because it does if you, if you are not running anything, for example, if I, I now stop it. It does. It disappears because there is no file over there. But um, 
yeah with this though um something will appear because it will detect that the file doesn't exist and yeah so better like that because like i get a reminder that i'm not doing anything so yeah that, that was all for my scripts um uh, for this script i guess i might uh, also make a video on this one maybe tomorrow or the next the day after because it's basically the same thing except uh, some mathematical operations for calculating the total thing but yeah that that's mostly it